Let's learn to do anything with strings in Power Apps. That's right, strings is the S word, not anything else. This is a family friendly show. So what we're gonna to do today is we're just gonna go through a bunch of the different string functions in Power Apps to help you do things like when you're like, hey, my names are backwards, or I need to only extract out the invoice number, not the headers, or you know any of those type of scenarios where you are trying to do text manipulation, which is a core skill in fixing up and getting better data. That's what we're gonna learn about today. Like for example, one of the reasons we love Power Apps is it's an input way to make sure people are entering standard structured data so we can use it for like Power BI reporting. And one of the things we know is that people don't always type in exactly the way we want, so we're gonna use the string functions to fix that. If that sounds like fun, then let's switch over to my desktop and take a look. To make this video as easy as possible, what I did was I went ahead and pre-wrote all the formulas, and so then Patrick took my ugly app, made it pretty, thank you Patrick, so that we could come in here and go through these one by one and not worry about how ugly it is or watch me have to type too much. So the first one we wanna talk about is what about this scenario? This came up in my training class this week and someone said, hey, I've got the name Young, Shane and what I wanna do is I need to get the output of Shane Young. So there's a few different ways to do this. I've done it differently over in the past, but the one that we came up in class is the one we're gonna to teach today. And so what we're going to do is we're first going to use the split function. So the split function takes any text string, like so in this case, Young, Shane and you can split on a specific character. We split on the comma. So now all of a sudden it turns this text string into a table. So there's a table with a column called value and then there is young and then there is space chain. Now we've got two records in that table and all we really wanna do is kind of flip them around. So we said, okay, split it on that. So that created the table right here, the split. Then we use the last function. The last function takes a table, like the table we just made, and it says, give me the very last record in there, which we always know would in this case be space Shane. Ultimately though, I then said, wait a minute, I don't wanna have it space Shane, right? We gotta get rid of the space. And so then we can use the trim function, which we're gonna talk about again a little bit later, but the trim function just takes and removes extra spaces. So like the spaces off the ends. So now it's just the text Shane, S-H-A-N-E. So that gets us just the first name from this. Now, if you're real smart, what I could have done, I didn't think of it at the moment, I'm thinking of it right now, when I did the split, see how I did a split on the comma? I could have done a split on comma space. And then I wouldn't have had to do the trim, right? Because it would have gotten rid of that extra space because whatever you trim out is gone. Anyway, so now we've got Shane, but we needed the last name. So we're gonna do an ambersand, right? To concatenate. And we're just gonna add a simple space. So that's where we get the new space in here. And then we do the same exact thing, right? We take that same split text on the comma, but this time from the table, we want the first thing, which will be Y-O-U-N-G, Young. And so then boom, we take the first, do the dot value, and we've got Shane Young, right? And one of the things I always do when I'm learning and trying to figure out this stuff is I always put different, uh, you know, use inputs like this. Cause what if I change this to Bob, right? It still works. So that way you know you didn't hard code anything specific to this one, right? Or what if we do um, Bobby Sue, right? That would still work because it's splitting them up. So that's one of the nice things about writing these formulas. You gotta make sure that they're gonna work not just for your test name, but all of them. And so using an input here. Same thing, I would also wanna make sure if I made this last name you know, much longer, does it still work? Well, I didn't, let's make it not that much longer. But I, I, making it different sizes, it's still all gonna work. So I feel good about it. So that's the first functions we wanna talk about. Split, last, and first. Uh, very handy, last and first. You know, last and first work on any table. So like if I want to get, had a SharePoint list, I want to get the last record out of there. When we do our, our upload video, the attachment control table, right? We want the last record there. So last and first are really ones that, you know, you use in a lot of cases, not just with strings. Next up, we've got index. So the very first time I was ever challenged with something like this, where I was like, hey, I got to get this middle name out of here. So I said, hey, how do I get the middle name out? What I did in this particular example, as I said, hey, we want to split on the space. Okay, so now we got a table with Shane, Dog, and Young, right? So three rows, so we can't use first or last. And there's not like a get the middle row, like that wouldn't even make sense. But there's now this function called index. So index, if you give it a table, in this case, a table with three rows, it'll say, okay, cool, I understand there's three rows here. And so I said, index, give me the second row. And so then it looked down and said, okay, the second row is dog. And so that's why we see dog. And if we change this to Shane Awesome Young, whatever's in that middle space. And more importantly, if we were to say Shane Awesome Possum, all right, so now we got four things in there. It doesn't break it because it's just set up to always show the second one. You could do other things if you didn't want to do it. The other thing I guess I should point out real quick is like, 
I'm showing you these, these are in labels, but here we have the formulas, right? So if that's an easier way for you to look at it. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is like, if you just want this whole working app, you just go to training.powerapps911.com, sign up for my YouTube library or any of my paid classes, and you can just download this whole app. So third up, we've got intro to right and left. So the right function and the left function, that's for getting the ends of the string. So it basically just says, hey, start example for the right, look at the text input, this up here, and get the first four characters starting from the right, so 0, 0, 0, 1. If we add a 5 here, now we get 0, 0, 5, right, because it's 1, 2, 3, 4. So in this case, we're not splitting the text, we're just saying, I always know that I want the last four digits, right? Think about when they use your credit card, like what's the last four digits on your credit card? So somewhere there's a write for function that grabs credit card numbers and just looks at the last four digits. That's how you would do it. On the other hand, there's the opposite. What if I want to work from the left? Then we've got, you know, we want to get I and V. So this is saying get left, text input three, and then get the first three characters. So once again, if I change this to I and A, now it's I and A because those are the first three characters. So this one, these two only work if you have a very specific plan, right? Like we're not, you know, splitting on the dash would have probably given us a more consistent result if we were going to have varying invoice links or varying text in the front. So that's why I showed that a minute ago. But sometimes you guys just have very structured things, all right? And you just literally want the first few characters one way or the other. To that end also here, we're going to skip down a couple formulas here. Right and left, right? Very right and left. There is a mid function. This is one that um, I like to use. Like my brain thinks in mid function. So it's the same concept, but we're going to give it to text input. And then we're going to say, hey, find. So we're using another function called find. It says, hey, find the dash. So it's finding the first dash. And then it's saying, hey, from that dash that you just found in there, return the, the character number of that and then add one to it. So right, one, two, three. So the dash is four. Give me five. So mid says, look at this text input and give me uh, four plus one, which is five, and give me three characters. So one, two, three, four, five, which is the nine, the zero, the zero. So the nice thing here, like, is if we go here and we added a uh, like a, a plus one, right? Like that's one of those number things or one of those uh, phone number things. It doesn't mess it up because now everything is relative to the first dash. Also with find, you could say find the second dash. So there's an optional parameter on find to tell it to find the second instance, the third instance, the fourth instance. You gotta be careful with that type of stuff. If your data is gonna be dynamic, you can't find something that doesn't exist and it'll throw errors, but you could absolutely update this formula and have it find the second one. And then uh, also with mid, if you do not give it this trailing three here, that's optional as well then you have the ability, it would just get you the rest of the string. So if we like went back over here, right, there's the formula. If I just delete out that trailing three, then now it gives me everything after that first dash. And if I hadn't done this plus one, like we talked about, then it would be giving me the dash. Oh, let me pull that out a little wider. It would be giving me the dash, which I didn't want. So that's why we found the dash and we know we want everything after it. So we do a plus one and now we get what we want. And then if we want to get, you know, only the three like we were doing, boom. Mid is probably the most versatile, like, and I almost always when I'm using mid, I end up using find in the mix because I'm trying to find a specific character or pattern in the middle. And remember, like when I do, I keep doing like simple finds, but I could have said find dash nine. And so it would actually find that input, right? And so it would still find the locate, it would return the location of the dash nine, but in this case, it was do dash one. So now it's not finding the dash, oh, move my cursor. It's not finding the dash nine, right? Even though there's a dash there, it's jumping straight to the dash one because that's the first place that the pattern actually matches. There's a lot of flexibility there. Oh, I didn't mean to do that, I meant to do this. There you go, we're back to where we were. A lot of really cool stuff there. Okay, let's go back up to the ones we skipped. I meant to put those in better order, my bad. Now we have the lin function, right? All the lin function does is count the number of characters. So if you need to know how long your string is, maybe you're trying to do some type of data validation, right? The word please, I think is six characters. There you go, right? So then it's seven and then please say hi. Now it's 13. So all that's for is if you need to count the number of characters, that is often helpful in writing larger formulas where you're trying to be like, hey, I need the total length. I want to subtract some pieces. I want to find something. Uh, so it's not used on its own very often. It's more often used as part of one of the more complicated formulas. Upper, lower, and proper. So here I've got my text input, buddy loves to swim. Upper makes it all uppercase. Lower makes it all lowercase. Buddy loves to swim, puts it into a proper case. 
And what's important to understand is like proper case will even fix. So like say that they accidentally, you know, I make a lot of typos. I'm a terrible type. Oh, control Z. See, I told you I'm a terrible typer like that. So even though I see how it's down here, you know, this one's still making them all top big, all small, but loves right. The V and the W's are not capitalized. So proper is nice for, you know, that type of cleanup, uh, as long as you want all the words to start with a capital. The most common use of these is when you're doing things like, uh, like email address matching. So say that I want to say, you know, set my formula to be like, hey, if user email equals Shane at powerapps911.com, but I can't remember if the S is capital or the P or the A, what I'll do is I will say um, lower, put a lower around the user colon email. So that way, whatever email address comes back, lower just shrinks it all to lowercase. And then when I say equals, I'll just type that in all lowercase. So anytime that you're having a hard time matching things because they are case dependent and you just can't remember like what letters are and aren't capitalized, you know, doing a lower upper is a very common use there. Okay, we already did mid and fines. We don't need to do that again. So trim and trim ends. Um, so trim, as we just talked about, here is that's the first formula here. What you can see is that it's really just taking out any extra spaces. So it's getting rid of the spaces that are here in the front. See our spaces over here. It's getting rid of the spaces at the end and it's getting rid of the extra spaces in here. So trim is really nice for like just cleaning up space happy people. Trim ends only takes away the spaces from the front and the back, but it left the big spaces in the middle here, right? And I guess I should show you that it kind of goes all the way up. Trim ends, you know, is just for doing the ends. This is one of those things that I get really angry with, like websites where I have to sign up for something. And so I put in my email address with autocomplete on my phone and it usually puts a space at the end and then they throw an error. Eh, that's not a valid email address. They're right, but if they would just put a trim ends in their code or whatever the equivalent is in their language, then it would just take any extra spaces off the end and it would have seen that my email address was right. So if you're, you know, it's one of those things that's really great for fixing your user's text inputs where you're worried they're gonna add extra spaces because those extra spaces might mess you up, right? Back to getting clean data for tools like Power BI, you know, there's a difference between Shane and Shane with a space at the end, right? Like those aren't the same string, so they won't match. So if we always clean up, we're gonna have better results. Okay, now we have replace and substitute. Hey. And make sure you subscribe while you're sitting there right there, right? Because you like this video. So replace and subscribe, uh, replace and subscribe. Now I'm saying subscribe. Replace and substitute. Oh, easy for me to say. Replace and substitute are very similar with one new difference, right? So the idea is that they go in and look at a string like, do you like this video? And replace, what it will do is you give it a specific location. So in this case, I said, hey, go to the ninth spot remove the four characters. And so I did the counting, right? And so like is the ninth and it's four characters and then put in really love. So that's why it says, do you really love this video? Whereas substitute is more likely what you want. So substitute, it says, hey, go look in that text input, find the word like. So wherever the word like exists, go find it and then replace it with, in this case, I used the cute little symbol there. Um, but the nice thing here, like, so if I, you know, delete the word you, notice that did you, you know, did, uh, so it's in the little smiley face, this video that still works, but this now says did like really loves video because the replace isn't dynamic in any way, whereas substitute just found the word like and put and turned in the, um, the piece there. So just something to keep in mind, uh, you know, I always get them mixed up in my head and have to stop and think about it for a second. Most of the time you want substitute because most of the time you're hunting for something specific. You know, I'm hunting for some special characters that I want to replace with something um, you know, more standardized. Two more, we're almost done. So this one's a little different. The, the team, um, Garrett and us, a couple other people had to talk me into doing this one. But so concat. So concat is different than concatenate. Concat takes a table of data. So in this case, I have a combo box where I've selected multiple addresses. We'll put cats in there as well. It takes a table of data and then turns it back into a string of data. Remember we used split to take a string of data and turn it into a table? Concat is the opposite. Cat takes a table, turns it into a string. So this is the most common use case we see, right? We've got a drop down full of email addresses and they want to be able to choose multiple people to send it to. And so we then need to generate the, um, the right text string to put in the two line of an email, which I say the right text string and I now realize that I did commas and I should have done a semicolon, all right? And then we'll go down here and fix our little fancy formula, put a semicolon there so it looks right on screen. All right, right, we're fixing things on the fly. So when I select those three, three people, it's like, hey, all right, now we just have a string called Shane at powerapps91.com, semicolon, space, buddy, semicolon, space, cat. 
And so that's all because we wrote this formula to do this. Concat, like it has a whole video, I'll put a link up there. Concat is a super important function when you're doing um, things like this, when you're making PDFs, any type of tables and nested tables, like you can do a lot of really cool stuff with concat. So I never think of it as a string function, but they're right because it's taking a table and turning it into a string. So that's why you got included here. All right, last but not least, this one's a little more weird. In this case, there's actually two ways today to concatenate um, data, right? Actually, there's third, but we're not, we didn't do it. Um, right, the bottom one is what we do the most often, right? So we type in the user, ampersand, and then some dynamic stuff, and then an ampersand, and then typed ampersand, text input 10, ampersand, in the box, right? Like, that's the function you've seen me write a hundred times in this video. This is one that comes out if I just have to pound one out, because that's, that's the way I think. But what you've got up here is there is a new way Right, and this is called like string interlocutation. I don't know, they make up words that I can't say because I think they think it's funny, right? But the idea here is that this is a valid way to write that same thing. So both of these produce the same output, but now we have the ability to say, all right, dollar sign, double quotes, and the double quote just goes at the beginning and the end. And then in here, anywhere that you want to use something dynamic, whether it be a function or a text input or a variable, it doesn't matter. Anywhere you want something dynamic, you put these curly braces in, right? Let's look at this one in the, the, the UI just so we can see it, right? So if you take this one, go to its text. So that produces what you, right, you're seeing on the screen. So dollar sign, double quote, right? And then the double quote at the end. So the whole thing will just be in one set of double quotes. And then you just have your regular text. And anywhere you want something dynamic, it just goes right in there, right? Like if we wanted to add the time in here, we would just go right here. We just hit the space and then we'll do the little curlies. And then we'll say now. And now, you know, it's kind of hard to see, but you've got the time in the in the box there. And if you're like, oh, but I wanted the time format a certain way, right? Then you could throw the text function around it, which might have should have been in the video. Who knows? Um, and so the text function will say short date time like that. And so now it's formatted like a short date time, which was just default. So that's a silly thing to format it as. But but I just want you to see that whatever formula function shenanigans you want to do, you just put them in there. I be honest, I don't ever use this method. I still just go with the tried and true, right? Oh, not the wrong one. This one. Go here to the text. The user ampersand user full name ampersand typed ampersand. I, that's the way we've written it forever. It's the way I still write them today. But if you're fancy or if you're new, like this way is probably easier. I just have seven, eight, a thousand years of muscle memory at this point doing it the other. So anyway, both of them work just fine. You do whichever one makes the most sense to you. That's it. Not too bad, right? Like just a quick one, right? Remember hit like and subscribe. And then, you know, this is one of those things I'm kind of working on is I want to have more of these videos that are, you know, power FX function based. And so like in this case, it's the string or the text functions, but I, I want to just kind of have these little compartmentalized. I realize that you guys probably aren't watching this on a random Tuesday, but hopefully when you get stuck with your string problems, you're like, hey, how did I do that again? This video will make for great reference. Down below, right, is a link to all the different little sections. So if you want to jump to a specific one, that is a, a great way as well. And if there's anything we can do to help you, right, whether you want to sign up for my training classes, you need consulting services, or just me to help you fix one little 30 minute problem, we offer all that over at powerapps911.com. Just go over there, fill out the contact form, and we'll get back to you. All right. And with that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day.